Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at reflections. So throughout the video we're going to have a look at reflecting shapes in different kinds of lines, whether they be horizontal, vertical or even the diagonal lines. And we're also going to have a look at describing those reflections as well. So we're going to finish be finishing up on this question that you can see on the screen, but before that we're going to obviously get into the basics and make sure that we're okay with all the elements of reflections. So with that being said, let's get started. <laughs> So in order to understand a reflection, we have to understand obviously how to find the lines in order to reflect it. So we've got two questions here, and we're going to do them both on the same grid. Now grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, because we just need to have a little few notes on this in order to find the actual reflection lines. So it says here, reflect the triangle in the line, and the first line we've been given is y equals 1. Now in order to find that reflection line, it's easy enough, we just need to find the y-axis. So the y-axis is obviously the one going up and down, and we're going to find the number 1 on that axis, and there it is, just there. So in order to draw the line y equals 1, obviously we wouldn't want to draw a vertical line going upwards, because that would be the y-axis. We're going to just draw in a horizontal line going through that point, and there we go, there is our line. Now the reason that's the line y equals 1 is if you pick any coordinate on that line, the y coordinate is always going to equal 1. So there we go, that's our line y equals 1. Now the actual process of reflecting it, which is quite nice and easy, we just need to pick a point. So let's pick this point just here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to count straight down to the line, so that's going to be one square away. And if we go one square away from that, that would be just there. And all we're going to do is repeat that for all of the points. So let's go for the other bottom one, one square away from the line one square away, and the final one up here, which is three squares away, so one, two, three squares away, would be just down here. And obviously nice and neatly joining that all up, there you are with a pencil and a ruler. There we go, there's our first one. Let's have a look at our next one. So it says here, reflect the triangle in the line x equals minus one. Okay, so looking at this one. Now the line x equals minus one, again, we're gonna find minus one on the x axis, which is just here. And again, we're not going to draw a horizontal line there because that would be our x-axis. So we're just going to draw a nice straight line going upwards from that point. So let's just go through that nice vertical line going up. Okay, I've not drawn that in perfectly there, but you get the idea. So again, we're going to just follow the exact same process, but this time we're going to re reflect it in an, this a vertical line. So picking the point, that's two squares away. So again, two squares away. And just repeating that process. And again, just been doing that for all of these corners here. That one there is three squares away, so one, two, three, and that guess is just there. And again, joining that up, again using a pencil and a ruler, and there we go, it's been reflected. So that's how we're gonna go about these. Obviously you might not be asked to reflect it in a line y equals or x equals, you might be asked to reflect it in one of the axes, in which case obviously the line is normally drawn a little bit thicker for you, but if it's not, okay, you can always, you know, if it's said to reflect it in the x-axis, you could even just draw the line in the x-axis just to make sure that you're absolutely happy with that. But there we go, that is how we're going to do a reflection, and here's a couple for you to have a go at. Okay, so for this question, there are two questions there to have a go at. For both of them, obviously, you just need to identify where that reflection line is, whether it's going to be horizontal or vertical, and the general idea of where the shape's going to be. Obviously, once you've paused the video, you can just obviously do that on the screen, pointing your finger at it, or however suits you. Um, but there we go, pause the video there, have a go at these, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so for this one then, the line y equals 1 then for the first one, so reflecting the line y equals 1. So that's going to be a horizontal line where y equals 1 on the y-axis. And there we go, we need to just reflect this. So point at a time, so that's 1 away. The next one's 3 away. And this one down here is 1, 2, 3, 4 away. So 1, 2, 3, 4 gets us just to there. And again, joining that up nice and neat with a pencil and a ruler. On to the next one. So for this one, x equals minus 2 for our line. So let's go up through minus 2 on the x-axis, and that's what we need to reflect it in. So again, just picking those corners nice and carefully. Let's get rid of those. So that is 3 away, so 1, 2, 3 away. We've also got the other one, which is 3 away, and we've got our final corner down here, which is 4 away. So it's going to be right on the edge of the grid there. There we go, and connect that all together, join it all up, and there we are, we're finished. 
Okay, so that's how we're going to do our reflections. Now let's have a look at some diagonal lines. Okay, so there's two diagonal lines that we're interested in. This is the one we're going to start with. So reflect the triangle in the line y equals x. Now that line y equals x is a perfect diagonal going through the grid. And what it means is we're going to draw the line where every x coordinate is equal to the y coordinate. So for example, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, and so on. And it creates this nice diagonal line. So I'm going to draw perfectly through those and then extend it all the way down with a ruler. There we go. Just be careful though, because obviously if the grid is not perfectly scaled on both those axes, maybe the y axis jumps up in twos and the x axis jumps up in ones or something along those lines where just the grid isn't perfectly scaled, you just need to be very careful with that. Normally they're quite nice though, so you don't really need to worry about that too much. But here we go, we've got a diagonal line. Now we can have another line as well going in the opposite direction. So we could have one that's sloping in this direction. And that line is referred to as being y equals minus x. You could write minus y equals positive x, or vice versa, but vice versa, but as we normally have y equals, it's normally listed as y equals negative x. So that could be sloping in the other direction, but for this one, it is going to be sloping in this positive direction. Now again, you just follow the same process here, but instead of counting up or across the lines or down the lines, we're going to count diagonally. Now that can seem a bit strange, so I'm going to draw it in. So from this point here, we're going to go diagonally by half a square to this point, which means we need to go another half a diagonal to this point just here. And it starts to look a bit strange, and this one does tend to confuse people. Let's have a look at the next one. So this point here, we have to go one whole diagonal and another half to get to that line. So we're going to do one and a half away in that same direction. So I'm going to do the half first, which gets me to there, and then another one, and that gets me to there. Okay, let's get rid of some of these lines. It does start to look a bit messy here. There we go. Okay, look at our last one there. Let's go for a different color. So this one here, and again, we're going to have to go through the shape for this one. So I need to go one, two, and a half. Okay, so two and a half. So I'm going to do the same again. So a half, and then the two, one, two, there we go. So again, it starts to look a bit strange, and if we join this up, the reflection itself can look a bit bizarre. It kind of looks like it hasn't actually been reflected. What can help here is that if you just rotate it, so obviously I can't do that on the screen, but if you rotate it so that that red line or that diagonal line that I've drawn in is pointing directly upwards or is directly vertical, then it makes it a lot easier to actually be able to see that. Okay, you can kind of see it a lot better if you rotate it. So I would recommend that if you struggle to see these, because they're not the nicest to be able to do. So there we go, that's how you're going to do one of these reflections in a diagonal line. You just have to count diagonally through the squares rather than up and down or across the lines. So there we go, let's have a look at one of these for you to have a go at. Just think in as well, I probably will link this in the description so you can download the worksheet if you want to print this off and have a go. But here we go, let's have a look at the next one. Okay, here we go, so one for you to have a go at. So again, just pay attention to the fact it does say to reflect it in the line y equals negative x. So obviously just sloping the opposite direction to the one we just looked at. But there we go, pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so we need to draw in this diagonal line to start with. And this is what I was talking about on the last one. The x-axis stretches from negative six to seven, and the y-axis goes from negative five to seven. So what you don't wanna do on a question like this and this is just a common mistake that people make, is doing something like joining it up to the top corner. So I'm hoping you didn't do that, but obviously just watch out for that. So again, y equals negative x, we've got when one's positive, the other's negative. So let's get rid of that, let's try and get that perfect. Don't think we're gonna get all of these perfect, but there we go, almost, there we are. So it's gonna go in this direction. Let's try and draw, join that up a little bit better than I've drawn those dots. There we go, so there is our diagonal line. Now again, we just need to count across those diagonals. So I'm gonna start with this corner just here. That's one and a half down to the line. So one and a half away gets me to there. The same for the top one. That's two and a half, so two and a half away. Let's go for this one, that's two away. So down to there. This one here is three away. So there, and then the final corner up here, one, two, three away. So one, two, three down gets me to there. And there we go, we can join all of those up, and that is what your shape should have looked like. So there we go, again, you can obviously rotate that so that the line's pointing upwards, and that makes it a lot easier to see. Right, okay, so on to our next question, let's have a look at some of these descriptions. 
Okay, here we go then. So describing a reflection. Now obviously you can see that this shape has been reflected and it says describe fully the single transformation that maps shape A onto B. So obviously we're gonna to have to say that it is a reflection. Okay, so that's the first thing. If we're gonna make a description here, we need to say it's a reflection. That's number one. Now we need to say which line it's actually been reflected in. So it might be that it's reflected in the X or Y axes, in which case you would say it's, been, it's a reflection in the X axes or a reflection in the Y axes, but this one actually hasn't been. Now we need to find where that middle point is. So if we have a look, and obviously this is a bit of a visual thing, what you could do is you could, could count from corner to corner to try and find the middle. So maybe, here we go, that's one away, one away, and then two away, and there you go, you found your middle point. So there we go. Obviously, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see that that's the middle there, but just a little bit of a, sort of, sort of a process there to think about if it's a nasty one to find. So then draw your straight line down. There's your reflection line. It goes through one on the x-axis. So that is going to be a reflection in the line. There we go. X equals one. Okay, so whatever number it goes through on the axes, that is going to give you your line equation. This one here went through 1 on the x-axis, so it is the line x equals 1. And just bear in mind as well, none of the ones you're going to practice here are going to do this, but it could go through at a halfway point. So for example, it could go through at 1.5 or something like that. It doesn't have to be a whole number, although most of the time they are. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're always going to go through a whole number. But there we go, that's how we're going to describe it. So we're going to state it's a reflection and then also the line that it's being reflected in. And also bear in mind, it could have been reflected in a diagonal line, in which case you should be able to spot that as well because they normally look a bit odd. Okay, but here we go. Here's a couple for you to have a go at. Okay, so for this one here, you probably won't even need to go about drawing these. You probably just need to sort of imagine where the line is, think about where it's going through and see if you can spot the name of that line. Okay, so we know that these are both going to be a reflection. So what line have they been reflected in? Is it an X equals line, a Y equals line? Is it a diagonal line? But there we go. There's two there to have a go at. So pause the video and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so nice and quick on these ones. The first one here has been reflected in the X axis. So it's a reflection, and we would say in the x-axis, okay? So a reflection in the x-axis. The next one here is one of these diagonal lines. So having a look at that there, there is no a vertical or horizontal line that we could reflect that in. It has just been reflected in that nice positive diagonal that goes in this direction. So that would be a reflection in the line y equals x. There we go, and there are our two descriptions. Okay, there we go. So almost done. We've got one question to have a look at before we finish. Okay, here we go. So our very last question. It's quite a long one, this one, but it's a good question. It says here, Kyle reflects triangle A in the x-axis to get triangle B. He then reflects triangle B in the line y equals x to get triangle C. Then we've got another scenario. Amy reflects triangle A in the, y, in the line y equals x to get triangle D, and then she reflects triangle D in the x-axis to get triangle E. Amy says that triangle E should be in the same position as triangle C, so in other words, they're both going to do these two reflections, and they should land in the same position. So is Amy correct? And you must show how you get your answer. So we're going to break this down step by step. I'm going to start with this. Carl reflects triangle A in the x-axis to get B. Let's do that one. So in the x-axis, Let's start with each corner. It's going to go to here, two down, and then it's go to there. Now that is how it's going to start off. There are four reflections to do. You've got number one and number two. And then for Amy, you've got number one and then again number two. And we're going to see if they land in the same position. So if you want, pause the video, have a go at that one. Otherwise, stick with it. I'm going to go work through this one for our final question. So let's draw that in. Now this one here, there's a lot of information, so let's label that up. It says that's going to be triangle B. So yeah, that's triangle B. It then says we're going to reflect triangle B in the line Y equals X. So we want to draw that line Y equals X in, which we know is this diagonal here. Let's draw that in and reflect it over. So I'm going to start with this top corner again. One, two and a half. So two and a half away gets us to there. Then for the bottom left corner, we're three away from the line, three diagonals away. So one, two, three. And for the final one, we're three and a half diagonals away. So that's going to go to there. There we go. And that right there is triangle C. Now let's look to another colour. Right, so we need to do the same now, but for Amy. So Amy reflects it first in the line Y equals X. Okay, well, let's draw that one back in. So Y equals X. 
Now that first point on the top left is already connected to the line, so that's not going to move. The top right on the triangle there is a half a square away, so there we go, that's going to go to there. The bottom point there, which we've got crossed already in red, is one and a half away, so that's going to go to here. There we are, and let's draw, draw that in. And that is triangle D. And then we need to finish this off. We've got one more reflection to do. It says she is then going to reflect triangle D in the x-axis to get triangle E. So again, x-axis we've got down here. Let's start with the bottom right corner on triangle D. That's three away. So one, two, three lands us on this triangle here. The next one is four away. So down to here. And the final point there, which is also four away, gets us to there. Joining that up. There we go, and that is triangle E. So as we can see, they're not in the same position. So we can say, is Amy correct? No, she is not. And we've shown how we got our answer there by labeling it all on the diagram. So there we go, loads on reflections there, loads to be thinking about in terms of drawing them, finding those reflection lines, and also describing them. And a slightly more interesting question here where we have multiple reflections to do one after another. But there we go, hopefully you found that useful and helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you for the next one.